exposure to the viewers' comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. If you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it. If you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about, it's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. Haven't done a comments video in a long time, so we got a lot to get through. And we got a lot of drama here. We got a couple situations here, uh, one of which I had to break bulk with. You see in front of your face uh, the comment I'm referring to, and there's a couple more after this. And then there's a plethora of other interesting viewpoints, criticisms, critiques, and compliments. So let's get to it. So this comes from someone who calls themselves Stewardship. Now, what that name actually means, I'm looking at it. I don't know if they meant to put the D where the T is in Stuart, the last T in Stuart. I think it would mean stewardship to be a steward, unless this guy's name is Stuart with a T, which it is not. I have a history with this individual. This individual has a history of not being as meticulous as one ought to be with correct sentence structure and English grammar in general. And that's just one example of it. Because I can't imagine the guy's name is actually Spencer. The name Stuart is nowhere in the guy's name. So anyways, they were a member and long story short, I had to block them. Now I've gone into this in, in several other videos but let, let's get to the comment. So he says, and this is in response to him talking about what a fallacy is or isn't, saying that he's saying that I used the fallacy in uh, my Kuliana to something that he said. And he says, a fallacy is a man or a woman can think without knowledge. This being said, all actions come from a source of self-centeredness. Now, the last part of that I agree with, but the first part, that, that's not what a fallacy is. OK, because this is another common theme that this guy does. He makes assumptions for other people. How do you think without knowledge? Thinking isn't the verb of the thinking is in the plural form of that are it's basically movement. OK, if you don't have knowledge, there is no movement. So the moment you set your foot down, you have to have knowledge of where you're setting your foot, whether that's some place or or no place or into emptiness you still have knowledge of where it's going so that doesn't make any sense at all i did post a comment giving closure to what a logical fallacy is uh, for stewart ships knowledge cultivation it's up to them whether they want to look at it or not because again uh, the individual, my past experience with them over the last year or so is that they kind of make things up as they go. Like, they think they know what a logical fallacy is. Obviously, they don't. They use their own meaning for it, which is fine if you get other people to come to a concordance with that. But that's not going to happen here because we use a specific set of criteria to gain finite means and closures of words. And he's not following along with that, which means he's not correct within the context of correct sentence structure. Using LY as the justification word is employed to group as many bearing views as possible. This is the very basis of using fiction language spelled out for any claimant who has eyes to see and ears to listen. So 
it appears as though they are criticizing the use of plain English fiction Babel, which, if someone's using Babel, they're using Babel to convey a point to people who don't have a cognition of correct sentence structure. For someone like this, this is like Russell J. Gould style uh, tactics, where you start attacking Babel when Babel was being used to begin with, with the bounce of the honor and the grace so that the ease of the communication could happen. This individual apparently is not here to understand what I'm saying. They appear to be here to project what they think my intentions are. Do you see what I'm saying? Assumption, presumption. And again, my year or so of dealing with this individual, it's right on par with what they normally do. The difference between right and wrong is merely the claimant's ability to ration. To ration what? Not sure what that means. Maybe they mean rationalize. And again, it's taking care to communicate as clearly and proficiently as possible and eloquently as possible what you're trying to say. The difference between ration and rationalize. So to recap, one can sense that there is a slight touch of projection impaired with the poisonous suffix ly. Through this becomes clear navigating these types of maneuvers can flare emotions and judgment to any who's reads and thus has a war-like mentality and voids neutrality, which is why I sense this explanation is beneficial for any claimant's reader. It appears that stewardship has a very high opinion of himself. I'm not saying that he does or he doesn't. My experience is that he does, which can be a challenge for anyone learning correct sentence structure. You have to let go ego and you have to cultivate humility which is what I try to teach people to do. This is the same guy that literally said to me, and I quote, I want them to fear me when I walk through the door. Meaning the fiction courts and people like that, he wants them to be afraid of him. And to me, I, I, I tried to correct that because within the psychology, you know, and what I was supposed to be teaching him, it's, that's bully mentality. You're using the same tactics that they're using against you, which is fine if that's what you want to do, but that's not something I'm going to teach you. That's not something I'm going to go along with. So my assessment in hindsight is that stewardship, i.e. Spencer, came to me with a cup that was pretty full or almost full, and I tried to give him a little knowledge, but he didn't have room for it. He didn't have room for it, and he didn't want to hear it, and therefore, a series of failures happened. Fail, okay, not, not to say failures, but a series of events happened that were not beneficial, you know, from his point of view, to his health and safety and his construct. And then he tried to blame all of that on me, which I went into this in a couple other videos about feeling bad for people and scheduling things outside of my business hours to help people, giving people knowledge that they're not ready for because I felt that, oh, they could handle it, which obviously in his case, I'm wrong. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm definitely fallible. And it was a mistake to do that. However, I did say to him, bro, I'm going to share this stuff with you, but you are accountable for it. You can't come back later and say, oh, Jason, it's his fault. He did, blah, blah, which is exactly what he did, which people like him, that's, I guess, a lesson that they have to learn. And that's why I had to break bulk. So after I explained to him what a fallacy was, they come back and say, the fallacy is the act of thinking without knowledge is what your plain, simple English question was asking people to judge upon. Actually, the question was to make a guess. Just a guess, a harmless, fun guess, if you choose to participate. So, again, there's a bit of projection going on there by my perception. That stewardship is projecting what he thinks is going on when it's really nothing other than what I said it was. I'm asking the viewer to make a guess. That's it. 
So I'm sure this is understandable to be read and interpreted if the reader is not biased. But I am also sure interpretation through the lens of a claimant who is lead down a short and narrow road with the intended outcome of the constructor with the comment statement question to be a personal amusement by the author to reflect the author's true emotional level. Oh, so now they're trying to do little uh, digs at me, which is pretty funny. Again, projecting their assumption of what it is that I'm doing. When I simply ask the question for people to guess, and they don't have to, you know what? Spencer, no one's twisting your arm to be here or leave comments. So I'm not sure what your intention is here because it's certainly not to learn correct sentence structure. We've already established that because you don't have closure on the grammar. You have no idea how to really use it. Hence, that's why you got involved in some of the scenarios you got involved with and the outcomes happened the way they happened because your cup is already full. You don't have anything left to learn. You know it all. So go do it and uh, Godspeed. So the final comment from stewardship. They say, just be sure to point out that it started by you assuming and presuming my statements without any other question for clarity and took actions upon your own assumptions. But I am sure you won't point out your fallibility, your navigation that is based on your many skills and emotional damage to curtail the context of our conversation out of context, as you always claim this is a podcast of opinion. Oh, what is he talking about? Okay, you must be talking about uh, for the quantum grammar shoot. Um, and again, the stories I share on that podcast are usually an amalgamation of different people. And again, this guy is totally like thinking I'm always talking about him, which is crazy to me um, to assume that. What kind of an ego must one have to assume something like that? Um, but it goes along with the, you know, my experiences with him in this past year. It goes right along with that type of thing. Um, as a wise man once said to me, if you hear someone saying things like that and projecting things like that, then they probably exhibit those same qualities themselves in their own private life, which I found out to be very true. So, actually, Spencer, it started by you contacting me, okay? Because that's the way it always happens. You were a guest aboard my vessel. You agreed to the contracts that I gave you. You totally agreed to those things. No one twisted your arm to do any of that. And on top of that, you violated those terms and conditions multiple times, multiple times, I gave you grace, let it go, confronted you about it a couple times. You apologized the first time. The second time, you didn't really give any type of apology. But you did admit to violating the terms and conditions that you agreed to. So it started by you coming to me. No one twisted your arm to come to me. No one. No one forced you. No one held a gun to your head. Nothing. So... This is where I do this. Oh, by the way, you're sure I won't point out my fallibility? I just did that a couple comments ago. Of course I'm fallible. Everyone is fallible. You have my authority to use the last two private communications I sent you as substance and knowledge to use as knowledge cultivation for your cult members. <laughs> I am not scared or intimidated by your assumptions of senses of myself. I have nothing to hide, nor will I change my stance with regards to your emotional status. So this individual it must be some sort of emotional master because he can judge someone else's emotional status, something I would never do. That's akin to an ad hominem attack, which, by the way, Spencer, is a logical fallacy, an actual logical fallacy. So, I mean, he can do whatever he wants to do. That's fine as long as he does it over there. Um, and as far as his authority for his emails, there is no authority, Spencer. 
You're a guest aboard my vessel. Those are my emails. You agreed to that in the contracts. And the minute you violate the terms and conditions, the contract is, is null and void. That's it. There is no confidentiality anymore. That's why I never say anything in an email that I wouldn't want in the public. So although I could make a video outlining every single communication we ever had to back up every single thing I've ever said about you or about your behavior, your erratic, chaotic, uh, very unpredictable type of behavior, one minute you're angry and stressed out and the next minute you try and be calm and cool. I mean, it's all there. Including the the final one that that I received from you, which which goes into religious ramblings and and projections and judgments and things like that. I mean, but I really have no intention of doing that because why would I? Why would I release any of that? Of course, if you threatened me or something, then then I would have to. And this guy, this guy's always talking about, I'm not scared or intimidated. He's always talking about fear and intimidation. He wants the fiction to fear him coming. So that's the world he lives in, quite obviously. And that is not the world of correct sentence structure. Correct sentence structure is the balance of honor and grace, maintenance of rule one, rule equal, and the position of peace and neutrality. Something that I, as a tutor, failed to pass on to this individual because his cup was overflowing already. So I'm not sure why he came to me, if he has all the answers. Yes, you have great knowledge, but I see your weakest link, and it shows to be a large impediment and motivation for you to master the language and grammar, but it still won't fully change other aspects of your mental condition like many other followers with regards to our communications and your need to educate when not in a role of educator tutor versus contracting with a party. What is this guy even talking about? So, this guy presumes to know what my motivations are? Not only my, he presumes to know my emotional state, he presumes to know my motivations. Wow. Is this guy like the Buddha or something? You have accused me of all the things you are guilty of as much as your knowledge is valiant. It is valiant. It is merely an armor or more armor that houses the construct that the soul imparts thereof. For the record, record, all claimants here are simply trying to gain and learn knowledge. So Spencer now positions himself as a speaker for all claimants that ever come here. He's now their representative. That's a very Russell J. Gould thing to do. You creating an impediment in this learning process and claiming it to be learning style, simply avoiding your inner child trams work. I bless you and free you of your anguishes as best as I can. Well, Spencer, you can take your blessing, put it in a self-addressed stamped envelope and put it in the mailbox. That's what you can do with your blessing. But you must have the ability to let go of your trauma memory. Oh my gosh. Now he's giving <laughs> life advice. Because this guy's life is so perfect and on track. And just like at one with the cosmos that he feels that he has the position to advise other people. And that's, folks, that's all you need to know about this situation as far as in the context of why I deal with it the way I have, the way I, why I've become more blunt and more harsh about it. Because people like this, people exactly like this, which I've dealt with multiple people like Spencer in the past, for some reason, they just don't have the capacity to humble themselves in a given situation. See, myself, the way I do things, I am not, you know, the way I do things, people like this come to me just like anybody else, and they want to learn the grammar. I have a certain way of teaching. 
If they don't agree with it, they can leave at any time. If they don't agree with the contract, they don't have to abide. They, they don't have to stay on board. They, they don't have to do anything. They can leave. They can leave. This guy chose not to. And actually, he chose to try and impose his personal belief systems, his personal projections, his personal way of thinking about things onto me. And didn't learn the grammar. He did get to an advanced state, but he doesn't have closure on the grammar. He doesn't have closure on the court mechanics, judge mechanics, or anything like that. He has more of a Russell J. Gould type of mentality. Might makes right. Even though he would probably tell you that he doesn't, he still thinks that way because of, in part, and this is my perception, of the things that has happened to him, that have happened to him. Some violent things in some cases, which my heart goes out to anyone that that happens to. The thing is, is that if those things upset you and, and modify your thinking into a fiction type of mentality, you're never going to get correct sentence structure. You're never going to get past that anger. You have to get past that anger in order to be successful. And this individual um, just for whatever reason at this point in the now space was not able to do that and i am not in a position to contract with this person anymore because they have consistently violated the terms and conditions of our contracts multiple times and i do have the emails to prove it as he does as he does so he's more than welcome to make a youtube channel and, and put stuff out if he wants to that's up to him i definitely have mine at the ready my powder is dry. Okay, enough of that soap opera. Now let's go on to a comment from someone named Elizabeth. And they said, Russell ruined my family. Now, on the surface, you know, my heart goes out to you. I know of multiple people who have come to me in the private and confidential and shared with me that this man or some of his followers have ripped them off for gold, for silver, for money, totally ripped them off where they paid for a service and Russell just ghosted them. So, you know, that's, uh, that's par for the course with that guy, I guess. And you can see other things, you know, with that crypto rice guy and that, uh, what's crypto rice's friend? I can't even think of his name, Humpty Dumpty or something like that, or Lefty. Some other financial crypto guy supposedly got ripped off by Russell. But let's go a little bit deeper. Did Russell ruin this person's family, personally? Or did this person choose to contract with Russell without knowledge, without reading the contract, without doing their research? It's like when I was contracting, you know, with the the other comments I just did with the uh, stewardship. When I was dealing with him, I made sure at every possible turn to say, you know, you you're here willingly. You you're agreeing to this, right? You understand this, right? You understand what a donation is, you understand what a gift is, right? You understand the terms and conditions. You understand that I can void this if you violate the terms and conditions one single time. I can violate. I, I can void that contract. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. So that's the thing. Russell probably doesn't do that. Russell probably just puts the contract out there and then someone like Elizabeth will agree to it, pay the money, and then get screwed over and then blame it on Russell. Always got to read the contracts, folks. Always got to be in, in full capacity of your ability to cognize these things. And that way, this type of scenario will not happen. Or it has less of a chance of happening. Next comment comes from Rube Starr. And they say, it is so interesting that you started quoting this man. I've been meaning to study him lately. Thank you. And they're referencing G.I. Gurdjieff. Uh, the fourth way teacher that taught in the late 1800s 
early to mid 1900s. Check them out. Next comment comes from Plain Run, and they say, "I am a novice too. What is CSS CPSG?" That is the abbreviation for Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsing Syntax Grammar. How does CSS CPSG works in a courts in the legal system? Well, quite simply, it doesn't because it has no part of the legal system. But you can create your own court using correct sentence structure if you have closure on the grammar. Hope that answers your question. Next comment comes from member for the claimant, and they say, I have chosen to answer none of the above after consideration. This is due to lack of knowledge with the man or woman's previous experiences, possible fears, and not wanting to make assumptions or presumption, which is fair enough. However, when I put these polls out in the community section, I'm asking you to make a guess based them on a plain English. Like, say, for example, if I were to meet for the claimant in a bar down the street, and I'll say, you know, what do you think about this? Do you think it's that or, or that? Is for the claimant going to say, you know, I'm not going to answer that because I don't want to assume or presume. I was asking in plain, simple English in fiction. But again, it's their choice whether they want to participate with that or not. I would like to know if this goes across the board with everyone, with their children, uh, their spouse, their parents, because that would make for quite a difficult uh, mode of navigation in your communication scenarios. Next comment comes from Terence Herming, and they say, when someone's core beliefs are challenged, cognitive dissonance occurs, which probably does involve their ego. A man or woman, be, oh, okay, yeah. And, and that's true, and that's basic basic psychology there. Um, you find this especially with religious folks or political folks. When something contradicts what they've come to hold dear in their heart and their belief system, cognitive dissonance will result. And yes, it does have to do with ego, because people, for whatever reason, become very emotionally invested in their beliefs. And by beliefs, I mean that is when someone takes an opinion and then gives it the same weight as a fact. A fact is a fact. There is no argument when a fact is present. But if you take an opinion, that can be argued all day. But if you now take an opinion and project the factual value onto it, that opinion is fallible. And all kinds of cognitive dissonance will occur when that opinion is called to question, which it will be. Next comment comes from Dominic D'Angelo, and they say, Lack of knowledge, typically all of the above applies in my experience, but when someone has shown the proof or truth, whatever, is the generally accepted terms, and they choose to still deny reality, I worry it's something truly evil. I mean, for me, good and evil doesn't really come into it. Um, good and evil, it's opinion. It's wherever your position is, where you're standing, as to whether something is good or whether it's evil. Take Epstein, for example. Cognitive dissonance can only be an excuse for so long before people were forced to admit majority of conspiracies were true. Well, we can't really take anything as true or false in that regard. Because unless you know Epstein personally, or you know any people personally, how can you say anything about it? It's all speculation. Next comment comes from Rosvon. Thank you for your membership. And they say, thanks, man. I really needed to hear it like that. I had this acquaintance calling me and telling me all these terrible stories for hours and would get mad every time I came up with a solution. And he was still doing the same mistake. Yes, that's exactly right. As Gurdjieff once said, to paraphrase, if you have a friend or someone or a loved one that falls down, you can help them up. You can help them up to their feet. They have to take the first step themselves. If you help them take the first step, then they're going to use you as a crutch, and then they're probably going to get mad at you 
uh, later on down the line and resent you. So while someone gets knocked down, you can help them to, to their feet, physically, or however you want to say it, but they have to take the first step forward of their own volition themselves. You can't help them in that regard. Otherwise, these negative types of things happen. So I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that, that helped you out, Rosvon. Another one from Rosvon, and they say, Beautifully said, it would be nice to have a shortcut to laser focus and constant reminder of set priorities. What would you say is the main cause of this mental chaos? Um, oh, this was another Gurdjieff quote. Rosvon, there are no shortcuts. There is no shortcut. Um, anything we're doing takes now space to do. Uh, mental chaos, the cause of mental chaos is a person's mentality. Whether they allow themselves to be affected by external influences rather than navigating their way through these external influences of their own volition and willpower. For example, if you get out of bed in the morning and you stub your toe or break, you know, break a finger or cut your finger and now the rest of your day is ruined because that happened, well then you are a you are a victim of external circumstances. You allowed an external circumstance to modify your mental condition of state. Like well, how reliable can a man be that has their whole day ruined by stubbing their toe? Right? So that's just an analogy. So that's what the what Gurdjieff kind of teaches is that most people are automatons and they are completely ruled by external circumstances. They are reaction machines. They never really think about anything. That's why a lot of people fail to be able to keep promises and be on time and keep schedules and be consistent because they're always they're like a pinball in a pinball machine always getting smacked around by flippers rather than, you know, being a steward of their own direction. Pi314 says, is the A in DNA a negation? I know this individual. I'm not going to say what their name is. Um, they've been studying the grammar for at least two years, I'm pretty sure. And if they're asking a question like this, this far on in their studies, then I have to question where they're at. Because this is like beginner level stuff. So if they have access to an etymology dictionary, they can answer their own question. Another one from Pi, they say, would the mother have to be alive and have a live life claim to be authority and claim to gratitude? And my answer to this, again, with a person like this individual who's been in the in the community for such a long time, um, these things are common sense things that one would know if they did workshops with me, which I'm sure they did one workshop with me that I remember, but they never got closure on the grammar. And they do obviously don't have closure on the grammar if they're asking a question like this. So my answer to that is, only the witnesses on your live life claim, your live life claim witnesses, must be living, breathing creatures. Otherwise, how can a dead individual witness a live life claim? doesn't make any sense. But as far as mothers and things like that, if you're giving the fact of the matter of who you're credentialing your mother, no, they don't have to be living. If you're giving a fact of your continuance of the evidence, for your entrance into this domain. Comment from Dennis Thompson. They say, hello, Jason. If the fact, why do they do, that's interesting. Like they put, hello, Jason, which is, <laughs> not in parentheses, but yet it's not correct sentence structure either. <laughs> If the fact said is correct, the man and woman should be humble and say thank you for pointing out their weakness or mistake. Well, now Dennis is telling people what they should or shouldn't do. 
Folks, you have to be very careful with how you phrase things. If you're going to learn correct sentence structure, if that's what your volition is, you have to be very careful with how you phrase things. Notice I didn't say you should be very careful. I'm just telling you what you have to do because there is a set criteria, set, set criteria, set psychology, set grammar mechanics in order for this to be successful. So you have to kind of tweak the little things to get to the big things. And that's one of them. I highly recommend not telling anyone what they should or shouldn't do ever, unless they ask you, which no one asked Dennis. So that is what stopping and correcting is about. Uh, that's only part of it, Dennis. That's only part of it. But honesty and having a hard time understand question but I answer so maybe I can get more insight into my own weaknesses well that's a very humble position to take Dennis and I honor you for that I appreciate that and I hope that what I said helps you in a, li in a little bit on your journey to learning correct sentence structure thank you very much for the comment I appreciate that that was a nice touch at the end there Comment from member Tin Rib Music, and they say, My observation is that with mindset not able to accept reason, without reason, is there any substance? My opine is with what I can only guess. If their convictions are made totally unconscious, it must be like living in a past with a future fear of the unknown. Living hell. My position. Not their fault. Social weapon. Not in my control. Show some compassion, but break bulk when boundary crossed. Apologies, small phone, John. Thank you, John. Um, his position is it's not their fault. I agree with everything John's saying there, except for the first part of being not their fault. Because everyone has a choice. John has a choice. Spencer has a choice. Stuart Ship has a choice. I have a choice. We all have our choices. And... They make us or break us. So, yeah, that's the only part I disagree with. I told there is no way that an adult can say that something is not their fault, because they made choices to get to that juncture in the now space. So, if it's not 100% their fault, it's at least half their fault. Am I right? Next comment comes from Harold No Kumar. And they say, my apologies, I read it incorrectly. It would be grateful and honored to learn from you, Jason. Is there any step-by-step -step for dummies, so to speak? Of course, I can participate in. I don't expect it for free. I have a good amount of knowledge in law and mechanics, but not enough knowledge in correct sentence structure to forensically syntax documents. Thank you for time to read your comments. You're very welcome. And Harold, any video you watch, I give more than enough information for you. Uh... To discover which venues or services I offer for learning grammar. So I might as well just repeat it now ad nauseum. You can either study the almost 900 videos on this channel for free and learn it. Or you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. But please remember to include your full correct name to the best of your knowledge. Next comment comes from Ivandian. And they say, hi, Jason, every video I watch, I learn something from you. You are a great thinker. You have logic in everything you say. You make me reflect on my actions. You're absolutely right about what you say in this video about the trespass that many of us, myself included, do without realizing it. Special greetings from your humble follower. Good holidays to you and your family. And same to you, Ivan Yan. Thank you very much for your viewership, for your membership, your humility, most importantly. Um, you're an inspiration to me my friend. And for those of you who may or may not know, Ivandian has taken it upon himself to learn correct sentence structure in English and then translate it to Spanish. And I wouldn't even be mentioning this if he hadn't made leaps and bounds in progress with this. I've been working with him on it a little bit, but he's doing most of the work with it. And he's doing an amazing, phenomenal John, uh, job on this. So, Ivandian, muy bueno, mi amigo, mi hermano. Next comment comes from Damon Lockwood, and they say, change your haircut, bro. 
And then I say, if you change your face first, I'll think about it. I know you aren't giving cosmetic tips for the head like that. <laughs> <coughs> All right, sorry about that. So this individual comes on. I gave back, you know, the same energy he brought. I, I offered it back to him. And then he commented after that saying, hey, you know, sorry, I'm... My first comment was harsh, but I don't understand what this is or what's going on. And so then I said, you know, hey, no problem, man. All's forgiven. It's correct sentence structure. If you're interested in learning it, you know, it's a grammar technology, blah, blah, blah. Contact me. And then he deleted his comment. So he got out of here quick. But that, that was great. Next comment comes from the... Uh, Another Russell J. Gould cult follower, I'm guessing. Correct quantum whatever. I've I've posted their comments before. Their grammar is horrendous. Even though the name of the channel is correct quantum grammar, it is not correct in any sense of the word. Uh, it's novice level at best, as you can see by the colon and the space at the beginning. They start off their sentence with of the, which is the concern, the consequence. Every correct sentence structure must start with for the. A basic novice beginner knows this, but yet this individual doesn't. So of the closure, of the word sovereign, oh, and then they put the cause after that? Oh my goodness. Three position lodial fact, four position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. <coughs> Voids the mathematical interface. Particle of negation, ing. It doesn't end on an authority. Just terrible, terrible, terrible. And uh, I jettison them because I don't want to pollute this channel with this type of quantum gobbledygook bullshit. Keep that stuff over in the Russell J. Gould section there, bro. Over in the remedial section. Next comment comes from Ganser Einer. And they say, just a question. Why is RJG such a trespasser making such erroneous trespasses and still getting attention from anywhere with a sane mind? Well, that's an assumption there because you're assuming that anyone that believes Russell J. Gould has a sane mind. I beg to differ because I've dealt with Russell J. Gould cult followers and individuals and they don't appear to have even a tenuous grasp on sanity by my perception so I guess that answers your question power even the imagination to have power seems to be so corruptive for some characters um I take a different stance on that I don't think that power corrupts at all I think an individual is already corrupt if they're so weak as to let something like something as intangible as power corrupt them. And by intangible, I mean psychologically. I mean, the word power, of course, is tangible contract. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that uh, just the idea of it is sort of intangible. Thanks for the comment. Dennis Thompson says, Hello, Jason. Please don't delete your whole channel. For myself, maybe, but once my health conditioning gets better, I want to seriously learn this from a man I believe can teach it. Correct. In fact, that is one in X billion. Your leadership is needed. Well, I thank you for those kind words. I hope that your health does get better. I hope that you are healthy and happy in this coming new year. As far as leadership, I have no volition to lead anyone. My volition is to teach people to lead themselves. Okay? Just to make that clear. I've made that clear from the start. A lot of people say, oh, Jason's trying to be David Wood Miller. Or, oh, Jason's trying to claim to be commander and blah, blah, blah. Not true. Never, never, never once have I ever claimed anything like that. I have no desire to do any of that. Because I feel if people are going to be successful with this, then they have to take accountability for themselves. Please have faith in all of us. We are brainwashed. And you know that it is hard to kick the door into our minds. Anyway, question for you. Maybe you might answer if you like. Do you like history? 
Yes, I like stories. I like his stories and her stories. World War II history. Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I just visited Fort Morgan, which supposedly was activated in 1812. It took 15 years to build it. And then it was also active during World War One and World War Two. As there is a YouTube channel, I'd like to know about his channel's 300,000k sub, and most people are 30 years. It's not a bang bang game channel, but he has a great mind insight. Anyway, please reply if you want, but it's up to you. Nothing to do with your question. Merry Christmas. Your family, yourself, and your bees. Merry Christmas to you, too. Appreciate your comment. Next comment comes from Carter's Technology. And they say, they cannot create correct contract. It's like two children playing house or job. Job? LOL. But I can tell you one thing about the syntax grammar they speak of. You won't be able to understand or appreciate the technology that was discovered by David Wynn Miller. Well, that's pretty assumptive, Carter. To say that I can't understand or appreciate the technology discovered by David Wynn Miller. I've been teaching this stuff since February of 18. I don't know where you've been or what you've been doing, but I've logged thousands, literally over 30,000 hours with this stuff of performance and teaching and so on and so forth. So maybe you don't know where you are, bro. The moment you have your children taken and you are not charged or guilty of any crime and they railroad you without being held accountable, you'll wish you had a way to call them on their SHIT and protect your children from the monsters. Well, that is definitely the hallmark of someone who doesn't know correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, what they just said there. Now, I'm not bashing on what happened. That type of thing is horrible to have one's children taken from one. There is no doubt about it. But I can pretty much guarantee you that if you have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, yourself, you yourself as your own authority, and your you're a live life claimant, your family are live life claimants, your children are live life claimants, and you have all your ducks in a row, I'm pretty sure things would turn out a little different than what this individual is explaining. And that, my friend, is what the claim is with the quantum language parse syntax grammar. See, they don't even know what the name of it is. It's correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. That is the correct name for the technology. Currently, every computer used numeral values to interpret and translate words and number Via the internet and banking and so on and so forth, services that will use quantum language part. Oh my goodness. Voice recognition, natural language processing, semantic analysis, blah, blah, blah. Good God. But don't bash on Russell. Okay, so there it is. This individual is a Russell J. Gould follower, which explains that one, they don't have closure on the grammar, and two, this last little bit here from 1 all the way down to 11 is a bunch of hogwash, gibberish, hopium bullshit that has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. And if this individual would actually take the time to study correct sentence structure and learn it and use it, they would know that. But again, it's, um, it's a choice. It's a choice. Carter's technology chose to be here on this channel, chose to invest energy in this comment. So hopefully something I've said here will get through to them. They'll get curious and they'll contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, request a consultation using their correct name. And I, I can explain it to them face to face in 10 to 15 minutes. And if they're open, if their cup is open, unlike Spencer's cup, but if Carter's cup is, is empty, then the possibilities are endless. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.